Welcome, everybody. Uh, week seven. Gosh, we're almost done. We only have next week to go. Tonight, we're going to have a little bit of fun. Um, instead of just the normal uh, dry going over an article or seeing a lecture, um, I am literally going to take and uh, have a couple games to do um, along the way. Uh, check our learning, check our, uh, our, uh, how much we're actually getting from, uh, from the course and have a little fun in the process. Now, the, the attendance points are the same, whether, whether you bomb these, this little quiz I'm going to give or you do well on it, although I'd like you to do well so you can kind of get a good indication of how, um, how everybody is doing. Okay, so let's start with our first article. What I'm going to talk to you today about is the article that was submitted about the European Union and their central bank digital currency that they're planning. Now, part of the challenge with um, this article is a couple, three, actually about three statements that were made in the article. So let me pull it up. And the article was uh, quoting Christine Lagarde, who happens to be the uh, European Union equivalent of our Federal Reserve Chairman. So she is the head of the central bank, um, European Central Bank, and she was asking questions about the central bank digital currency. Now one thing that you'll note with this article is that the blockchain news doesn't really comment on her statement at all. Doesn't really comment on whether it's possible, whether it's not possible, or anything. So what they, what she said here, um, here speaking at an event in Frankfurt on Wednesday, uh, Lagarde reiterated that the ECB is not designing the digital euro in a way that will make it easy for users' data to be collected and commercialized. Okay, well, they're not going to try to make it easy, but you and I know that once you put a currency on a blockchain, which we assume by the definition central bank digital currency, that it's going to be a currency that is on a blockchain, that blockchains tend to be able to be observed and data called from them. We'll see. We'll see. Um, she basically cited the fact that the requirement for the central bank digital currency for the European Union was going to be designed such that it would just be a currency and not necessarily um, break any privacy rules, especially their um, digital privacy rules that they've put in place. Uh, the GDPR, the Global Data Rights Protection Act, um, protection pri privacy um, re regulations, that's it. The Global Data Protection Regulation is what GDPR stands for. So here we have a situation though where we come down here and uh, and she said Lagarde noted that it will be another banknote with a little less anonymity. Okay, what does a little less an anonymity mean first? Um, meaning you're not anonymous? I mean, if you have a banknote in your wallet and decide to go to, to Wendy's and buy a hamburger with it, the federal government um, doesn't know that you just made that transaction. It, you know, it's totally private, it's totally an anonymous. But here we have a situation where the central bank digital currency admittedly is going to be a, have a little less anonymity than having a, a bank note in your pocket. Interesting point. So what I'd like to do is based on all the information you've learned here and what you see in this article, because all of you would have seen this article posted um, as, as the week progressed, uh, what I'd like you to do is go to kahoot.it on your cell phones. You could actually go to kahoot.it on, on your computer if you desired to do that. But anyway, it would be good if you had two devices, your phone and your comp computer or some such combination. Phones are the easiest to do. So if you've got your phone, either an iPhone or a, a Agile, um, a, a, an Android phone would be fine. Uh, and what we, we're going to do is we're going to take a little survey. It's just one question. 
And really what I want to do is get everybody involved with this so that you understand how to use Kahoot to begin with. And then when we do our blockchain review and have a little fun with the questions there, because some of the fun, some of the questions I had fun writing and just kind of want to see how they go over. Um, so we're going to start this. And when you get to Kahoot.it, I'm going to start it in classic mode. Classic mode means everybody has a separate vote. You're going to, going to go to Kahoot.it and put in this pin number. Okay. And so the game pin is there and please use your first name and we'll see the players pop up here as the, as the, um, as you get logged in with that number. So Chad is there for us. Okay. That's good. Juan, Lindsay, there we go. There, the editor, you know, I told you guys to use your first name. And the rebellious one sitting over here next to me in the room is the one that doesn't, of course. Um, very good. Very good. Keep going. I've got 16 people currently online right now, so I'm hoping to see 16 people listed there. Probably 15, because I'm probably one of those that are uh, listed as 16 concurrent, because I have the dashboard set up over here, so I'm logged into it. So we've got, got a few. Keep coming. Keep them coming. All righty. Hey, Robert, can you kind of see who we might be missing, see who might be having trouble doing it? Sure. There's Drew and Steve. Okay. Oh, I can't join. I'm at work. Okay. Sad, sad, sad face. Okay, I'll let you watch. But if you could answer the question in the chat window... Um, I would appreciate it. We'll add it to the results. Okay. Who's Strip Chicken? I can't remember. Um, that's Nick Bayham. Nick. Okay. Yeah. So Nick, um, if you could just write the answers to the questions in the, in the, um, chat window, we'll, we'll get it that way. Uh, Kunal. Okay. So. Okay. Just about everybody else is there. I think. Just about everybody else is there. Kunal, are you struggling to get in? Where is he on the list here? Third from the top. Third from the top? Okay. Kunal, you're here. But let's uh, get logged in. Or tell me that you can't log in for whatever reason, please. Because uh, I don't want to start without you if you're trying to get joined. Okay. Oh, we lost somebody? Got 10 right now. Okay, 10 out of 16. Okay. <laughs> okay, we got <laughs> Okay, Seth. That's good. <laughs> All right. All right, I think we'll go ahead and start. So, here is the poll. There is no correct answer to this, this little quiz. Um, and laughing is permitted. So this is the Digital Euro Survey. Okay. Do you believe that Christian, Christine Lagarde can ensure that the Digital Euro cannot be used for commercial benefit? So choose either the, the, uh, the triangle or the diamond or the circle or the square. You have five seconds, four, three, and we got two answers. Only two answers. <laughs> okay. Um, can we do this over again? Because we had 10 people on and only two people were able to answer. So, um, Let's play it oh, again. The time ran out. The, del the stream delay prevented them from being able to read the question and answer it here. Okay, then I am going to Let's go play a new game. And I'm going to go over here and edit it and give us more time. Okay. Good. Yeah, we didn't anticipate the stream delay, so we're going to add an additional delay here and see what we can do. Okay, there's Kahoot. Okay. okay. And so I can go in here to 
edit and go up to settings and um, no delay setting there. It might be on, no, oh, time limit on the right, it's question based. <laughs> it's, okay, per question? <laughs> oh no. Let's, oh, one all right. For each. We're gonna have to do a minute. Okay, we can do a minute. All right, let's save and right we'll be done. And now let's let's go do it again. So you've already seen it. Classic mode, you're gonna to need to put in a new number. It's gonna have a new pin. Eight, eight, four, five, zero, one, six. All right, Juan and Bruches, Paige, Ishkan, Lindsay, Cameron, and, <laughs> okay, Seth, Robert, the edit. Okay, he's an edit now. <laughs> he cut it off. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve this time. Hey, that's, that's positive. That's positive. And... 12. Okay, very good. Are there others? I'm about to get this Kahoot thing up and running and I was having connectivity issues. Well, I'm glad you figured it out, Paige. Okay, are we ready to start? I don't see anybody popping in. Let's start. And now we've got a minute and a half to go ahead and, uh, or a minute to go ahead and answer it. That should allow for the delay and allow you to answer the question. So, yeah, because it's down there. I get it. Okay, yeah, there's almost a nine-second delay between what I was watching on my um, display and up okay. there. Okay, seven answers, eight. And when it has everybody answering, nine, good. 10, 11, 12, three of you left. 10, okay, two, 11, one more time. There's 13. There's 13 people? I thought I saw 13, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, 12 answers, okay. Well, now do note that the, uh, the question, the answers were kind of scrambled since the last we saw it. So I hope you didn't just hit the circle if that's what you answered last time because it's a different answer there. And we have everybody all, all over the place. Although 42% she says she's a politician and her lips are moving. So therefore, no, she's not telling the truth or can guarantee that. Um, and we're split evenly on no digital currencies are op open to data mining. And yes, it's the focus of the GDPR to ensure privacy. Okay, yeah, I, that's good. And, uh, is a one person that said um, would be a requirement for the development. Yes, it's gonna be a requirement for the development. So it'll be interesting to see if they are able to um, work that into the development process and actually be successful at that. But that has been the focus of the GDPR for a long time. So very good, very good. Okay, now everybody knows how to do it. We're gonna play a new game. And let's see. Uh, if you'd like to move on to something else for a moment, I can get the other Kahoot set to a minute for each. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and do that. I'm going to scoot out of that one and scoot out of that tab and out of that tab. And um, what is the pin? Okay, uh, Kunal, the pin was shown at the very beginning. And if you missed it, uh, we're going to have another one coming up here, here pretty soon. So, um Watch at the very beginning before it goes into the question. Um, and that's where the pin is. Okay. Okay. So thank you. That was, that was a fun digital, uh, uh, digital Euro thing. Now, what I want to move on to then is, uh, should I just go on and do the careers one? Yeah, okay, ahead. I'm going to skip skip the one that we have coming up and talk about careers in blockchain. 
um, because this article was submitted uh, and this article was actually a very good article. Um, it uh, you know, highlighted the fact that like security is in high demand for IT disciplines, um, blockchain is becoming higher and higher demand as well. They need both consultants to help uh, the companies implement the blockchain, so a developer uh, would be necessary. They also need project managers, so uh, a blockchain expert in that regard would be important. Um, so it highlights several ideas that, that, you know, becoming a certified blockchain professional would become an important, uh, important certification to have if you wanted to pursue that. So, you know, you notice that in, in my biogra biography, um, I tell you that I am a certified blockchain professional uh, or expert is the word they use. And I did get that certification in a site that I'll show you here in a bit. Now, um, they talk about certain blockchain certifications are introductory. Yes, you, you've kind of been introduced to things now. Um, why is it a must? Well, a blockchain certification is going to be more and more important, just like the certifications in certain programming disciplines became important as the industry matured in the computer science realm. I mean, when I was first uh, exposed to computers, you could get a job just saying that you knew how to do a database. In fact, I had several clients that I wrote databases for that I just said, yes, I can do it. And I quickly ran to the library and figured out how to do it so I could do it for them. Um, those days are gone. Um, those days of flying by the seat of your pants are, are really gone. So you're going to need certifications as time goes on. And these certifications are very focused, which is really, really nice. So what I want to do is I want to show you this particular website here because the one that they mention here is probably not the best and I'll, I'll basically show you why. If you go to this Central Blockchain Council of America, um, you know, you see a very good looking website and they have some courses. Um, they have an, a professional and an engineer and a leader um, and you can get enterprise cert level certifications for those uh, courses. But basically you can read through all their courses in about five minutes. Um, they just really, they really don't have much yet. They're not very mature yet. So what I would like to show you is instead of going where this particular article stated you should go, I would go to the Blockchain Council. Now the Blockchain Council homepage is here. I am logged in now and I'll be able to show you and give you a tour. Now it costs money to join the Blockchain Council and usually you can join get the the first year for $99. And after that, if you want to continue using their training and keep uh, learning along with them because they're adding more courses as the industry keeps changing. Um, if you log, if you want to continue using it, it's $199 per year after that. So there is a little bit of a challenge, you know, monetarily that might not fit in your budget until a little bit later on after you get your uh, first permanent job, but you know, whatever the situation is. Also, each course ends up costing a certain amount of money to take the test to actually get the certification. But I'll show you how well, how good the certification is once, once you get that certification. So I'm going to go to the certifications page here and it doesn't, it wants me to go to a specific certification. Uh, the new launched ones um, are, are interesting in the respect that if I could just stay on the newly launched, wow, it doesn't want me to stay. There it goes, finally. Um, Metaverse, DAO expert, Web3 expert, um, some in Spanish. If, you, if you're more comfortable in Spanish, uh, you have a certification that's in Spanish, uh, as well as several others too, not just those. But see, the, the new ones being added are gonna focus on the, the metaverse, the NFTs, uh, the new programming languages and such. So you can see that, and here they special, specialize this list on the metaverse and DAOs, and certified blockchain expert is where I started. 
and I'm currently working on certified blockchain developer. So here down in developer, here this top. I don't like their website. <laughs> I can't stay on the particular thing, but uh, there's developing blockchains and here's the certified blockchain developer. I'm currently enrolled in that one. Um, and the neat thing about it is, is here it tells you it takes about 15 hours. And uh, maybe it's not so neat, but the other one took, said it took eight hours and it literally took me longer than that. Um, I think they're per overly optimistic in how fast you can really move through these um, because I felt I needed to take a little bit more time in order to get it abs fully absorbed. Um, and so there's this huge list of different blockchains that you can develop for. Corda is another language, uh, as well as Hyperledger Fabric is another language. I would start with the languages rather than focusing on specific blockchain specific coding, um, that type of thing. But you have varying different things you can go for. You have online degrees, you can have a degree in blockchain, a degree in currency trading and, and other things. Um, and I'm trying to get to the page where, uh, resources, news. Okay. Maybe I need to get logged in to go to where I needed to do. I thought I was already logged in. Obviously I wasn't. So I'm in, <laughs> I'm in uh, Chrome instead of Bra Brave. I'm going to bring up my Brave browser. It has my uh, credentials memorized. So I'm going to, I am going to go down here. And I am going to go to blockchaincouncil.org. Um, and now I can get logged in and okay okay here we go now when you're logged in this is, this is the dashboard that you get and you can see you know my certificates if I look here it'll show that I have the uh, the uh, certificate of membership of course but the certified blockchain expert which I got 1230 of 2021. I'm kind of remiss in not getting the next one done real quick, but that's the way they are. Um, my courses, here you have the list of courses. Just by joining, you have a whole hassle load of courses that you can take. So when I first joined, I took this blockchain basics and then you can see all those lists where, I, where it has 0% here. Here's blockchain expert that I purchased at that point then they've added these to the basic plan. And so they've added it to my basic plan even. Um, and now I've got blockchain developer that I'm, I'm done 17% on. So, and literally the blockchain developer, they talk, they ran you straight through installing all the prerequisite software, working with the, the that installation, and then starting to build your first uh, blockchain right from the second lesson on. So it, it gets pretty intense pretty quickly. Uh, if I go view this particular one, I believe it'll tell you right here and I can, I can resume my course. And when I resume it, it'll tell me on the, tell you on the left, um, you know, in it this module, we would compile, deploy and manually test our smart contract. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear, but there is sound because it wants to, um, it's, Click on compile. It, it plays a video. You watch a video. And what I did is I followed along on my computer. So basically it, it goes over some fundamentals that I already learned in the blockchain um, expert class. Uh, then it talks about Ethereum and prerequisites to install Ethereum. The, this blockchain they're gonna make in Solidity, which um, programs on top of the Ethereum blockchain. 
and then we went, I've gone through the basics of solidity and writing your first smart contract and so forth. So it gets right into getting you getting your feet wet and actually having you code. Now, I'm not one that can just read the code here on the screen and watch the video, and I'm an expert at it. I can't do that. And that's probably why it's going to take me a whole lot more than 15 hours to complete this course, uh, because I will tend to want to go through and make sure that I code all that on my computer, and I compile it, and I make sure that it runs. And what I noticed is that the there's some dating with this where um, the code didn't exactly match what would actually run and I had to tweak the code a little bit in order to get it to run and all that's a good learning experience as well. So the blockchain council basically literally is much much more than the other um, than the other course than the other website that uh, you did that you could see or that you could go to. So hopefully that is helpful to you. Hopefully you can go ahead and move forward on that. And if you do want a career in blockchain, this can literally help uh, to send you forward in that, uh, in that quest, okay? Break. Yeah, I think it's time for a break. All righty, you see the next one, then our next Kahoot quiz on the screen now. So, Kunal, that is the game pin that, um, that it is set for the game, so you should be able to use that pin. Now, um, Kunal, what probably happened is I probably hit start before you had actually gotten in, so it, it erases it from the screen. All right, so Kunal, you should be able to get in there. I'm going to hopefully wait until I see your name pop up there before I uh, move, move forward. Mm. Megan, did the key stick? Did the Y key stick on your keyboard? <laughs> uh, Seth Death? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Spooky season. Okay. <laughs> How many is this? 
How many did I see? Five, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, really? I don't have to count them? That's cool. <laughs> All right, Kunal, where are you? Okay. I don't see anybody else joining at the moment. Oh, there's Kunji. Okay, good. Kunji. Okay, do we have anybody else? Okay, Kunal, I don't see him yet. Okay, we're gonna have to go with the folks we have so we can get through, through with tonight's uh, event. All right, I'm gonna hit the start button and let's go do a blockchain review. True or false? Blockchains are of no use to business. Is it cheating for me to play without delay? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, wait till you see it on their screen before you. Okay, we got 13 answers. Is that we have at least 14 people, right? We need another answer. Need another answerer. Okay. Okay, we're down to. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the pin is in the bottom right hand corner. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm learning all kinds, kinds of things about Kahoot. Okay, so everybody thinks it's false. Well, way cool. I'm glad you think that because that's true. That is the correct answer. Very good. Let's go to the next one. And here we have the scoreboard. By the way, how quickly you answer the question is what gives you the points on the screen. And Robert over here, um, he is deliberately going to wait until he sees it on your screen before he answers, but that's probably not even fair either as you see by the fact that he's on the top of the list. So, all right, next. We'll just disqualify him at the end. Distributed ledgers are, another name for blockchain, books of account, Bitcoin, or data held on nodes in a blockchain. Okay, we are coming up on 30 seconds. Does this go against our actual grade? <laughs> How, what if I say yes right now and then say no at the end? No, no, Seth, they don't. <laughs> but do answer truthfully, please. It's no fun if everybody... <laughs> okay. All righty. The right answer is data held on nodes in a blockchain. Um, distributed ledgers are not another name for blockchain. Uh, blockchain can be a blockchain without distributed ledgers. They're called centralized blockchains, which really negates the idea of a blockchain, but you know, they're, they exist. And distributed ledgers, yeah, I fooled a few people with the books of account. Um, <laughs> Out here trying my best, coach. Okay, I get it. That's good, Paige. All right, let's do the next one. And uh, Robert now is in second place. That's good. Seth, good job, good job. And it looks like, uh, you know, these three are on the up and coming. Okay, next one, next one, quiz. How do blockchains build trust? Oh, by not changing the algorithm or by making stakeholders purchase coin, or by creating an immutable record, or by not using fiat currency.
All right, I fooled two of you. Okay, by not changing the algorithm, that definitely could build trust, not like Ethereum. And by making stakeholders buy coin, yeah, that one's pretty suspect. But yes, creating a mutable record is the way it builds trust, yes. Okay, let's see. Oh, Seth is staying on top of pages challenging. Let's go to the next one. What is not a building block of blockchain? So we got a bunch of Lego blocks there on the screen. So what's not a building block of blockchain? Shared ledger, privacy, coins or tokens, and trust. All right, we've got 13 answers in, 14 coming up. Do we have a 14? No. Yes, we got all 14 in there. Coins or tokens is not actually a building block of blockchain, where shared ledger, privacy, and trust are. Now, privacy? Yeah, I can see why people are tempted to answer that, definitely. And in fact, I threw, threw a bone in there deliberately that way because it's meant to be a private um, transaction between two parties. So, uh, but coins or tokens are not actually a building block of blockchain. Although they exist in most, they're not a building block of it, okay? And here, that's a little bit of a technicality too, so. All right, let's see who's where. <clears throat> okay, our top two are staying right there with a almost a 300 point lead for between second and third but boy we've got a quite a battle going on there and for first and second okay next one let's do number five what creates value in a blockchain being backed by a fiat current real fiat currency being well distributed or solving a real world world problem or having a coin rise in price Submit your answers. Let's see how we do. <clears throat> okay, we have all 14 answers in. Is there any way to speed it up and... Andrew Lewis just joined, so we actually have 50 people answering now. Oh, Andrew, can you answer this question real quick? If you have it already? It could be somebody else, too. So. Mm -hmm. All righty, 15 answers there. Oh, boy, we're spread all, all the way across the board. I've talked several times about solving real-world problems is how you create value in your blockchain. Um, so that's a good one backed by real fiat currency. Is there any fiat currency that's real? I mean, gold is real, but is there such a thing as a real fiat currency? Uh, being well distributed, well, that might create more trust, but it doesn't create a whole lot of value. And having a coin rise in price doesn't create add the value to the blockchain itself. It adds value in the coin, but not the blockchain. So that's my reasoning behind the answer of solving a real world problem. I'm <laughs> real crooked. <laughs> oh gosh. We have we have a change in the top there. Seth, what are you doing? Clear down in fourth place? Okay. Let's go to the next question. Six. What is not a consensus al algorithm? This one's a tricky one, so Think it through, guys. Proof of capacity, identity, proof of burn, or work.
Yeah, like I say, this is a tricky one. Okay. Hmm. Boy, I fooled nearly everyone. I fooled nearly everyone. Robert, are you the only one that answered proof of identity because you're the one that knew the answer? Oh my. I need to have a video on this one, I can tell. Uh, proof of burn is a real, um, a real consensus, consensus method. Proof of capacity is, and of course proof of work is, uh, is a consensus me um, uh, mechanism. Um, proof of work is what Bitcoin does. At least we all failed together. Well, let's see what, what the scores rank up to be. Robert probably ended up on top. Yes, he did. Okay. Robert, don't fall off your chair laughing so hard. All right, number seven, what does trustless mean? You can't rely on it. Or trust comes from the government in fiat currency. Or not having to rely on individuals, but on computer code. Trust is earned and not from code. And we've got a caricature of who can guess who that is in the middle. Our boy, Steve. Yep, you got it. Rest in peace. Yeah. Oprah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Have a coughing fit. <laughs> okay, not, hey, this is good, good answer. I fooled one person about trust is earned and not from code, and I fooled another one uh, with the dictionary definition of trustless that you can't rely on it. So trustless in a blockchain context means total, the opposite of the dictionary definition, which is really quite funny. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, so how do we have it here? Robert stays on top. And Paige is still next. Uh, Seth, are you going to drop completely off our board? Let's go to the next question and see. Having a wallet on an exchange like Coinbase is an example of a cold wallet. All right, 15 out of 16 answers. Oh, we have a split, ver split uh, verdict here. Well, is it a cold wallet or is it not? Let's go to the, n the next question is, is, there's another question that we haven't gotten to that might help answer this question better. So I'm going to hold off on talking about this one. So let's go to next. And Robert, stop answering so fast. I'm answering last. <laughs> okay. Okay. Lindsay's coming up. Okay. Seth, Lindsay's going to knock you off the board. <coughs> <laughs> Okay, we got our, our question that I was hoping for. What is not a type of crypto wallet? A public one, a custodial one, hot wallet or cold wallet? Well, the answers are coming in pretty quick. It must be a fairly easy answer. Or they're all taking Esteban's tactic and just Picking really fast. Yeah, Robert, you cheater. <laughs> All right. I think we can scoot it down to about 45 seconds. That's not an option. Go it's 30, 30 seconds to a minute. Oh, we're all over the place on this one. 
Who would want their crypto wallet to be public? Can we have, have a vote of hands? Um, no, everybody would steal the money out of it. So not a type of crypto wallet is a public wallet. You don't have those, they don't exist. A custodial wallet is one you'd find uh, at Coinbase, okay? A hot wallet is if you're r running a node on your own and you have your wallet on your computer. That's a hot wallet because it's connected to the internet, connected straight to the network, like the Bitcoin network. Uh, and you're doing mining directly on that network, you have a hot wallet. A cold wallet is created by uh, a hardware piece that looks a lot like a, um, a USB memory stick, um, but it has code in it and you um, you can actually use that as an address and put your cryptocurrencies on it. And then when you pull it out of the computer, it's not connected to anything. It's considered a cold wallet. Another version of a cold wallet is that if you're running your own node, you can also uh, print out your, your key, your uh, private key, and you can put it on a piece of paper and store the piece of paper in a uh, safe or other safe place. Um, and that's considered a cold wallet because it's disconnected from the network completely. All righty. Next, how's the scoreboard looking? And, uh, oh, uh, Paige is going to take you over. Take, uh oh. Look who fell off. Oh, Chad fell off. Seth fell off. Okay. All right. Next question. 10 out of 12. We're almost, we're coming on the glide path here. Governance can be written into the blockchain, yes or no? True or false? And you already answered, Robert? What a cheater. You want to stay on top, huh? I'm taking myself off the podium. Yeah. Oh, you answered wrong. Okay. All right, we have 15 answers. Robert's giving him a chance, giving her a chance. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay, we have you know, 22 seconds left. Actually, I can go by this one when I announce the countdown again because the delay will put my voice in the right place. Yep. <clears throat> Five seconds left, and we can find the answer. All right, only 15 out of the 16 answered. Okay, and governance, yes, can be written into the blockchain. That's chapter six in the book that talks about blockchain governance, okay? <laughs> okay. All right, okay. Wow, Paige has opened up a thousand point lead between her and Juan, oof. Okay, let's go see what 11 out of 12. True or false? Subscribing to my YouTube channel is good for your future. Don't answer too quickly. Think it through real careful now. <laughs> okay, two people had to say no. Okay. All righty. Oh, Lindsay's still coming up. Okay. And the last question is, businesses gain efficiencies by accepting Bitcoin as pay payments, providing NFTs to represent their product lines, reducing the number of intermediaries in the process, or developing blockchain to improve the image of the company? You know, I definitely think it ought to be improving the image of the company, don't you? Yeah. You know, that fear of missing out thing, you know? All right, down to 17 seconds. Alrighty, 
And the answers are <laughs> reducing the number of intermediaries. And I'm glad a majority of people answered that question. Uh, accepting Bitcoin as payments. Now, I don't think that gains efficiencies by deploying blockchain. Um, anyway, eight is the correct answer. So, um, got good half of you answering the right ones. All righty. So, the podium. Number three with nine out of 12 correct is Robert. He couldn't get himself off the podium. And Lindsay with nine out of 12 right was number two. And number one is Paige with 11 of 12 correct. Runners up, David and Steve. Chad, what happened to you? You crashed and burned? Okay. Except my winnings in the form of Bitcoin. There you go. All right. All right. We're going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, go ahead and take a break, two minutes, and I will uh, come back unless it's already time. It's already after the top of the hour, isn't it? No, we have eight more minutes. Have eight more minutes? Yeah, we'll come back in two minutes. Uh, two minutes, maybe a little bit less. It'll be a quick topic that I want to bring up. All right, so I'm jumping in just a little bit early just to make sure I've got a little bit of time to, to handle this last topic because it really is going to be quick. What I want to do is talk about how Colorado is now accepting tax payments in cryptocurrency. And it's a good thing to see that they're happening, um, but it required them to have a little bit of help. And what I want to highlight here is this article really uh, begins to show that the focus is the reality that some people uh, that some people like to pay in cryptocurrencies or have cryptocurrency accounts so but you go down here to the one of the last paragraphs says other states have tried to institute tax payments in crypto okay just a statement ohio was the first to do so in 2018 but it suspended its service a year later due to legal implications okay new hampshire tried it repeatedly to adopt a crypto tax payments but the bills did not make it out of the state legislature. So in other words, they had a problem getting the bill approved to actually execute it. So they never actually got a, um, got a payment system in place with cryptos. Um, and then states such as Georgia, Illinois, and Arizona have considered it, but haven't quite done it yet. Well, the way that Colorado did it was, was unique. And like I said, they had help. And so you go to their revenue site and, uh, my session expired. Here's the home page of their revenue site. And here, of course, they have payments front and center. The whole idea is to collect your money. So I want to go make a payment. How do I do that? Well, if I go make a payment, I've got several different options. I can go to online direct debit. I can go debit or credit card. I can do an e-check and here's cryptocurrency. Go down here. I can do an ACH debit, ACH credit, all kinds of different ways 
Um, and cash, of course, they give information only because you got to go to their one of their offices to pay them in cash. Now, each one of these, and I'm going to just take the top ones because they're probably the most popular. That's probably why they have them on top. Um, you have to log in to use a direct debit and it takes it straight out of your checking account. If you want to use a debit or credit card, you pay 75 cents plus two and a quarter percent of the total payment. So, you know, if you've got a thousand dollars, you're going to give them another 20, uh, 20, to 50 uh, as, a, as a payment on top of that. So that can get a little bit spendy. For an e-check, there's only a service fee of a dollar. So that one's probably pretty popular. You come down here though to the cryptocurrency and cryptocurrencies are made through the PayPal cryptocurrencies hub. There's the help. Um, PayPal has already smoothed out the issue. As far as the tax people are concerned, they're not getting the money in cryptocurrencies. The person can pay in cryptocurrencies and frankly the the taxing authority receiving it can have that money come to them in any currency that they want probably they prefer us dollars but this paypal cryptocurrency sub allows the user to pay in anything that they want they can pay in whatever cryptocurrencies that they have deposited with paypal paypal quickly transfers it to the um, currency of choice and on it goes to the taxing authority. Now they're going to charge you a dollar for doing this and and 1.83 percent of the payment amount. Now that seems like a pretty odd number but you know that's just the way they do it. Um, only PayPal personal accounts can pay using cryptocurrency. PayPal business accounts cannot use that. Okay and so they've got some restrictions but uh, for individuals you can go pay your tax liability uh, pay your property taxes, your whatever personal taxes and so forth um, at the taxing authority. So that kind of that wraps up this week and uh, good chance that we'll see each other again. We'll have some more fun and this has been really, really good. So uh, remember, if you haven't subscribed already, do subscribe. Um, it'll help you to know when more things come out and uh, hit that like button if you enjoyed today. Talk to you later. Thanks.